Hello everyone, and welcome to Ritelsi, where we'll be discussing a fantastic story today. Dragon Wars is a film. Be prepared for some spoilers. Every 500 years, a lady with the spiritual energy to turn a serpent into a woman is born. A dragon from the heavens, the entity who wields this power has the ability to either destroy or save humanity. The entire world, the authorities are investigating the sudden emergence of a man somewhere in Los Angeles. Shows a massive path which appears to have been left by a gigantic beast. Ethan is a reporter who has come to examine the incident, but the government officials refuse to allow him to do so. He refuses to answer any questions and orders him to leave right now. However, as he stares into the field and sees what appears to be a bizarre object, the man observes something peculiar to a scale that has been buried under the ground. Ethan remembers seeing something similar when he was a kid, and he begins to reminisce. As he glances into a peculiar pendant that he wears, he recalls his memories. Ethan was 15 years old when he went to a small antique store with his father, wants to sell a blade to Jack, the proprietor of the store. When the boy looks through the objects, he notices a peculiar box that opens when it detects motion. His presence was felt. When the box is opened, it shows a massive scale that emits an aura toward the youngster. When the business owner notices this, he has a heart attack. But when the father notices it, he has a stroke. When the man tries to contact an ambulance, Jack tells him to go to the nearest pharmacy and buy some medicine. Instead, go shopping. Ethan's father tells the youngster to watch after the old guy and then runs away but things end out differently. Jack lied about everything in order to speak with the boy alone. He informs Ethan that the heavens are home to huge serpents known as Amugis, and that, every 500 years, one of the serpents is rewarded for its good conduct by being transformed into a celestial creature, Dragon. The monster requires a mystical object known as the Yayiju for this to happen, but the evil creature has it. Buraki and his followers have been attempting to steal the item for a long time. Heaven chose to hide the Yayiju 500 years ago by sending it to a city in China. Korea is guarded by Harem and his master Bachan, two of the country's strongest warriors. The Bad Serpent, on the other hand, was aware of the whereabouts of this magical artifact. Narin, the daughter of a local lord, was meant to be the holder of the title. Having a dragon birthmark on her shoulder, Yayiju. The Yayiju would form inside the female when she turned 20 years old, and the, the wicked snake would reappear. Narin matures into a stunning woman, and she begins to fall in love with Harem. He too feels the same way. Harem is shown the good Amugi, who is destined to become a celestial dragon by the master. As it swims across the waves, the young man is taken aback by the gigantic beast. Bachan also gives the man the medallion that only Yayiju's protector wears. When his life is in peril, he can also protect himself from injury. Eventually, the wicked serpent gathers all of its disciples in the village in search of the village's treasure. The army then begins to fire a barrage of bombs at the population, causing massive devastation. They charge into the city and slaughter all of the males one by one, as the populace are no match for them. They are famous for their dragons and wizardry. They seize all of the women and go through each one, looking for the girl. With the birthmark of a dragon on her shoulder, the army arrives at the Lord's house quickly and assassinates Narin's father right in front of her, forcing the girl to flee the room and weep for her dying parent. The soldier rips open her clothes, revealing her true identity, and drags her away. She was far from her house, fortunately. The master appears and uses his power to defeat the army, allowing Harem to take advantage of the situation. To save the young lady, the two flee to safety, and the man reveals the truth about Norin's fate. After being wounded, the master manages to flee the battle. However, he discovers the medallion on the ground, with his pupil nowhere to be found. Instead of taking the woman to the righteous Amugi, Harem tries to flee with her. Buraki, the terrible serpent, is following them closely. They are cornered on a cliff by the thing, and they decide to jump and plunge into the waters. In the process, they murder themselves. The store owner presents Ethan with the protector's medallion and explains that he is, in fact, the protector. Bachan was reincarnated, and the boy was Harem, the warrior he fostered. The boy must find a girl because this is their second chance to fulfill the prophecy. Sarah, who has a dragon tattoo as well, and bring her to the main cave. Ethan goes to his friend Bruce and instructs him to locate the girl's name after recalling it, because she's possibly related to the enormous traces. The girl, however, Ethan's pal informs him that they require more information because there are likely thousands of them, many women with the same name in the city. Meanwhile, Sarah watches the news on television about the massive landmarks and feels enraged. Concerned for her safety, she dashed home without saying goodbye to her pal. She's definitely aware of the danger and is doing everything she can to defend herself. By perusing an ancient prophecy book, when her friend Brandy returns home, she is taken aback to discover that Sarah has erected countless paper cranes to fight off evil, keep talismans throughout the house. Sarah is comforted by the girl 
who informs her that she is merely imagining the threat. This, however, is ineffective since she is unable to overcome her natural dread. Sarah's fears are justified, as the city has been invaded by a monstrous serpent. Everything in its path is destroyed by the Yoyiju. The girl begins to have nightmares and wakes up in the middle of the night. She is in excruciating pain from her birthmark and phones an ambulance to take her to the hospital. She was taken to the hospital. After learning that Sarah has been admitted to the hospital, Brandy tries to locate her buddy, but she is unsuccessful. Only the girl's families are allowed to visit, so the nurse refuses to let her in. Brandy goes to Sarah's house to pack some clothes for her buddy because she has no other option. However, from the outside, the ground begins to shake. The girl dashes out of the house, only to be confronted by a massive serpent in front of her, which she yells at. In terror, before she can flee, Buraki bites her and throws her into the pool where she drowns. Ethan receives word the next day that a woman was slain inside a house by what the next door neighbors claim to be a colossal snake and rushes towards the place, fearful that Sarah has already passed away. When he arrives on the site, he discovers that the girl he was looking for is not the one. Sarah was transported to the hospital before the incident, and he learns this from a neighbor. He hurries to the site in search of the girl, but is stopped by the receptionist. Sarah has been quarantined due to a shoulder wound that could lead her to become ill. Infections. Ethan looks for a different way in and meets a doctor who is a great lover of the news, reporter, and immediately assists him in locating the girl. Ethan expresses his belief in the danger she perceives and emphasizes that they are in risk together. The monster is close by, so we need to get out of here. The entire building begins to tremble violently as they realize the gigantic serpent has trapped them. They've already been taken to the hospital. The doctor comes in and informs the two that they must flee immediately since they are in grave danger. As the doctor progressively morphs into Jack, Ethan leads the girl to the exit. From the start, he's been keeping an eye on them. They dash to Bruce's car, and the man immediately slams the accelerator pedal after seeing them. The monster appears in the garage and pursues them, destroying everything in its path. They rush out of the hospital and manage to flee before the thing charges at them. It comes out one step ahead of its prey and roars in rage. Bruce smashes someone with his automobile and comes to a complete stop before they can collect their breath. However, it turns out that the man is Buraki's servant, and he intends to return Sarah to Buraki, his tutor. The two make every effort to halt the general, but their attempts are ineffective. In the face of the man's armor, fortunately, the man was struck by a car before the girl was abducted, and the driver drives them away, swiftly get away from the danger. After checking that the two are unharmed, the woman drops them off and begins her transformation back into Jack, demonstrating that the elderly gentleman is still willing to assist them on their risky mission. Sarah is perplexed by everything that is going on and doubts the vision she is having. She continues to see in her dreams, questioning her own sanity. Ethan advises that they go see a psychic in order to learn the truth about her past. He has a psychology professor who specializes in repressed memory retrieval. As they kiss on the beach, he promises to keep her safe, but Ethan realizes that he hasn't kept his word. If she is the true keeper of the Yayiju, she will perish. On the other hand, the government's attention has been drawn to the city's ongoing attacks. They begin to suspect Sarah of being behind the monster's emergence. If they are unable to save the girl, the mission leader realizes that they may have to terminate her to keep the situation under control since the beast appears to be on the lookout for her. Buraki's general begins summoning more of the serpent's followers at the same moment. They release monsters and other creatures into the world using a variety of old scrolls as they plan to take over the globe. By any means necessary, Sarah, the government, locates the gigantic serpent and dispatches an army to hunt it down. To put an end to the beast, special forces were dispatched. They enter the monster's cave, where they encounter the gigantic behemoth. Right in front of them, the soldiers flee in terror and fire at Buraki, but their attacks are repulsed. They're still running from the monster, so it's pointless. The serpent's army, on the other hand, arrives on the other side and pushes the troops to fight. A turning point, in a single attack, the general summons his magic and destroys the men. In the meantime, Ethan's professor is attempting to recover Sarah's hidden memories. The girl ultimately sees her childhood and then even deeper into her life in her imagination. Naren's previous life, as her memories resurface, her spiritual force begins to awaken, enveloping her in a halo of light. Ethan stares in awe at the lights. Sarah recovers from the ordeal, but her abilities have alerted Buraki to their whereabouts, forcing them to flee the house as soon as possible. As the gigantic snake smashes the house and follows them down, the two flee rapidly. In the process, he ripped up the entire street. Fortunately, they are able to capture the monster in the residential sections, 
and Ethan is able to call his father. He convinces a buddy to arrange for a helicopter because they can no longer be safe on the ground. They meet up with Bruce in a restaurant, where he offers them provisions and informs them that the mission has been completed. The news building has a helicopter above it. However, the gigantic serpent locates them once more and begins destroying the entire city, constructing a structure to capture the girl. They flee the building hastily as the creature pursues them from behind. The police officers shoot at the big creature to distract it before they can be apprehended, long enough for them to flee for the time being. They keep fleeing towards the news building as the monster pursues them, smashing everything in its path. Everything in its path is being thrown into the air including the cars. While the creature produces many explosions, the citizens of the city panic and flee in terror. As a result, there was a lot of damage in the neighborhood. The two dash into the news building and eventually make it to the rooftop, where they are confronted by the police. They will be met by a helicopter. However, the creature notices their presence and climbs to the roof as well. The helicopter tries to take off, but the serpent leaps into the air and clutches the plane. Ethan is forced to jump out with Sarah before the carrier is smashed through the air and destroyed onto the floor. As Buraki roars in victory and stares squarely at the sky, dark clouds begin to fill the sky, couple with the intention of devouring them in order to gain divine power. Fortunately, they are spared when the US military comes and begins firing indiscriminately at the rebels. With a barrage of rockets and guns, they have a chance to flee the beast. Building, the serpent tries to strike back by destroying many choppers, but the army's combined firepower is too much for it. The gigantic beast is knocked down and sent sprawling to the ground by firepower. They keep shooting as the monster screams in agony. But what they don't see is the creature's misery. You should be aware that a dragon army is rapidly approaching the city. The monsters assault the choppers by hurling several fireballs at them, resulting in massive explosions. As the planes are forced to retrace their steps, the monsters' ground forces arrive as well, and they begin releasing a barrage of bombs. The police, causing the area to be engulfed in explosions. The military reacts by deploying armored vehicles in the direction of the creatures and its army. The serpent's general leads a horde of darkness. As the monsters get closer to one another, the two armies clash in a tremendous fight, an accusation against the military of the United States of America. The tanks open fire on the army, killing the creatures, but the enemy retaliates as well by launching a barrage of bombs against the trucks, causing massive damage. Meanwhile, Ethan and Sarah manage to flee the building, but they run into the government, agents claiming to be coming to assist them and remove them from the pandemonium. The agents take them to an underground facility, where the senior officer admits that he is familiar with the situation. About the legends of the past, he intends to kill the girl in order to put a stop to the lunacy, even if it means the monsters will die. 500 years later, come back. The other agent shoots his partner before the man can fire the gun, Realizing that he is in danger, the girl must live in order to save humanity permanently. He hands them the keys to the automobile and instructs Ethan to keep Sarah safe until they can replace the locks. The world's fate, Ethan drives the girl to the border, intending to go to Mexico. But Sarah stops him, argues that their efforts are futile since Buraki will find her wherever she goes. Goes. The dragons assault their car with flaming balls before they can conclude their chat. They flip over and crash into the road as a result. As the beasts round them, Ethan gradually loses consciousness. When the protagonist wakes up, he discovers that he is tethered to a post in the desert. The army of darkness surrounds you. They lead the girl to the altar and bind her to the table, ready her to be sacrificed. Be sacrificed in order to appease the wicked serpent. As they open the enormous door, the general and troops chant Buraki's name, liberating the prisoners, so that the girl can be devoured by the monster. While Sarah cries, the gigantic serpent approaches closer to the women and towers above them. At the sight of this creature, I was terrified. Ethan desperately yells the woman's name, causing the medallion on his breast to awaken, calling down thunder from above, which concentrates the energy into enormous shockwaves that paralyzes the troops and turns them into dust. After recovering from the blast, the gigantic serpent attacks them with rage, knocking Ethan out, away from the young lady. Another Imugi charges towards it and knocks it to the ground before it can devour Sarah. It grabs Buraki by the jaws and hurls him away from the pair. Buraki attacks the other Imugi as the two gigantic creatures yell at each other, biting its throat and tossing the gigantic serpent to the ground. Sarah recognizes that she must fulfill her destiny if the situation is to be resolved. And she approaches the serpents and calls the Yayiju into the sky from her body. Buraki tries to seize the luminous orb, but Sarah deflects it, and the good guys prevail. At this point, Amugi swallows the energy. When the evil serpent notices this, he attacks his rival, but the good Amugi morphs and defeats him. It eventually shed its skin and transformed into a celestial dragon. It yells angrily and grabs Buraki throwing him to the ground. The monster regains consciousness and attacks the dragon once more, 
but it is no match for the dragon. When the celestial creature is flung to the ground once more, Buraki tries to clutch the dragon's tail as it flies towards the sky, forcing both of them to fall, a number of them to take to the air. The righteous Amugi turns around and smacks the serpent in the neck, tossing it down as it slams into the earth. After that, the dragon charges a tremendous fireball and fires it directly into Buraki's jaws. As a result, the serpent begins to burn from the inside out, eventually disintegrating into dust. The dragon returns to Ethan and spits out the Yoyuju, which causes Sarah's body to disintegrate, to become a radiant aura that merges with the magical orb. The celestial dragon roars up to the sky and captures Yoyuju. It then takes off into the sky, gently dissipating into the clouds as it drops tears. Heartfelt condolences on Ethan's passing. Before leaving, Jack comes behind the man and informs him that he done the right thing, as well as to the other side of the world. Ethan bids his master farewell and continues heading into the desert, into a new future that he has made for humanity. So, what are your thoughts on this decision? Please let me know in the comments section below. Also, if you enjoy this video, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Stay tuned for more. I'll see you guys again soon.